The title of your mixtape, Stock Exchange, refer references to how the numbers of a person's followers or subscribers have become sort of their perceived value, both in the music industry and kind of in the wider world as well. Um, as a part of that mindset, do you find that relationships become more transactional and less authentically human? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think when people are like already aware, of, you know, through social media, they're aware of what you do, they might see like the value and, and it, authenticity is lost for sure, I think, in the way that that things happen through social media and the reason behind people's intentions as well is it, it definitely i think has shifted a lot and i guess it's something that we have to try to navigate and that's kind of what this mixtape is referencing is realizing that there is an aspect of that that can be usable in the real world as a business owner and just as somebody who has an entity out there or is an entity out there i do recognize that these things can translate to opportunities and and whatnot but at the same time like they separating that from self-value is really important because to feel like it's actually real like in the real world in your everyday functioning world i think is where it gets dangerous and one of the recurring sort of lyrical themes on stock exchange is kind of about being alone uh it's there on antisocial it's there on good on my own tonight and could have been you and obi are sort of about how you know people can be friends or strangers so-called friends or strangers can be untrustworthy is it harder to trust your interactions with other people as your career levels up and people want things from you absolutely yes definitely it's it's unfortunate but yeah i think it comes with it i think people have a difficult time sometimes and only some people right but sometimes they can have a difficult time with the changes that you're making like this can happen even if you're you know just like progressing within your job and maybe they're not progressing within their job or sometimes i think it's hard for people to be happy for people when they're not happy for themselves and so i think sometimes we get the translation of, of like envy and jealousy and stuff that may happen as someone starts to achieve success you start to realize certain behaviors like you start to see and you're like what i don't recognize this version of this person or like what is you know causing this shift Maybe it is a shift that they perceive from you as well, who knows? Um, but I definitely think it becomes a little bit more important to keep that circle a little bit tighter and to be a little bit more consciously aware of the fact that people are consciously aware of you. Stock Exchange 2 is musically like really adventurous. You know, you got UK drill with protest, you have Latin vibes with flamenco, almost pure pop with avocado, some sweet ballad singing parts on Could Have Been You. Um, were you just feeling different vibes at different times or was it more down to the different kinds of beats that your uh, collaborating producers were sort of cooking up? It was what I was feeling at the time, but also the wanting to kind of expand and try different things and actually like play with ideas or concepts that I was maybe too scared to play with before. So like language barriers, um, genre barriers, like expectations that come with certain regions that I'm not necessarily from and not to appropriate, but to like kind of commemorate, to celebrate and to participate. And so that's why I'm so excited to have like artists like Yizzy on protest and artists like Mala Rodriguez on uh, flamenco. Uh, I think it's it was an explorative year, you know, and I also think it was a very chaotic year. So I felt like it was the best time to uh, experiment with this idea that I had of Initially, Stock Exchange wasn't supposed to be a project, so it was easier to look at these th these songs as singles and have them be like completely individual to each other and not have to like follow a theme. You're a singer, a songwriter, a rapper, a producer, a performer, a video actor, a co-director, an entrepreneur. Uh, and you've just started being a philanthropist with your $10,000 Black-owned business giveaway in January of 2022. Can you talk about the source and the goal of that initiative? Yeah, I think I've just felt extremely lucky over the past two, three years, especially through this pandemic and still having opportunities, still having the ability to continue to grow as an entrepreneur um, and just solidify myself, you know, as a business owner, as, an, as a musician. I guess eye-opening to me what is possible as well. And so wanting to contribute to that air, contribute to that energy and recognizing that there are so many creators out there who uh, have insane, amazing ideas uh, that we've yet to see or has, has has just not been seen by enough people as yet. And thinking about ways that I could kind of contribute to like something that I value highly, giving people an opportunity the way that I've been giving so many opportunities uh, was one of the things that I really felt like doing. 